Now, the BRVM exchange app is up about 6.1% year to date, despite shedding about 0.4% on Thursday. Uh, Arnold Dublin Green, the director and head of global markets at Apacan Securities, joins me now as we look at the regional market, especially the economy of Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time today, Arnold. Let's first start with how you've seen that global investment climate. Uh, earlier, I was just speaking to uh, Pavina Yenkeri, and he gave quite some concerns around inflation and also uh, foreign currency pressures as, as it impacts Nigeria. But I'd like to get a sense from you what you're seeing play out, especially what we're seeing in Europe and also uh, the expected rate, rate hikes from uh, uh, global banks, global central banks. Um, I think I, I pretty much agree with the sentiment that um, the, the gentleman before said, uh, I guess, expressed on the uh, on this platform. Uh, we're just seeing a huge spike. I think right, prices are rising faster than anyone expected. Um, inflation is everywhere. You have oil and energy, but not just oil and energy. You see food prices rise. You're seeing you know, wheat prices uh, and a few other um, soft commodities across the region and across the world, should I say, across the world, spike. But then what you're seeing is the reaction from uh, global central banks. Um, the U.S. is expected to react, or the Federal Reserve is expected to raise rates probably next week when they meet. Uh, BOA raised rates um, last two meetings. Central banks of Canada, Brazil, Mexico, South Korea, Chile, <laughs> Poland have all raised rates um, because everyone is trying to combat this uh, the situation. The the, the Russia UK, Ukraine tensions aren't helping the markets. Um, so what you're seeing is a, is a feed through in all the prices. Um, so it's sort of um, you know, feeding through the markets, markets have been incredibly volatile. I don't need to tell you, it's been huge ups and huge downs. It's, you know, an up, uh, down Monday, an up Tuesday, a down Wednesday, mm. and so forth, and probably taking Friday because no one wants to hold any positions through the weekend. Um, that's what we've been seeing in, in the markets globally, really. All right, well, let's look at what we see play out with the BRVM. I'd like to understand what, for you, what you think is driving sentiments there. Okay, well, BRVM is a bit of a tricky one, I'll be honest. So there's been a huge um, disconnect between the equities and the and the fixed, fixed income markets over, over this quarter or the year to date. You mentioned earlier the equity markets have rallied. You had the uh, the BRVM index, main index, up about 8.5 percent to Feb. Um, the top 10 stocks up about 11.4 um, so percent, led by um, the likes of Palm CI and, and a bit of Sonatel and the TI, some other names, um, and somewhat larger than normal volumes as well, which is, was quite interesting. Um, you have you have um, you have markets like palm, you have stocks like Palm CI, the palm oil stocks, palm oil hit a, a, an all time high um, a, a few weeks ago. So you have the you have those sort of uh, commodity plays translating on the local stock side, but then the disconnect comes in the Eurobond side, where the Eurobond has more access to, I guess, international markets. It's a lot more liquid. Um, cocoa prices, unlike other commodity prices, funny enough, hasn't really rallied. Um, you know, when you speak to corporate traders to try to figure out what's going on, um, the talk is mainly um, uh, worried that the UK, on the UK, excuse me, the Ukraine Russian tension, um, uh, it translates into a, a demand issue for the derivative of chocolate. So, um, cocoa prices haven't really seen that rally. And I think this is sort of translated in the um, Ivorian space where you have a um, as well as global sentiment, as well as translated to. So the Ivorian bonds haven't really played um, the same or, or gone in the same trend as, as the equity market has. Um, and this is translated across the, across the region. Um, Nigeria, Kenya, I don't want to say Ghana, because Ghana has its own idiosyncratic issues. Um, but the BRVM on the Eurobond side, with where the international markets, international market participants can play better, um, has uh, has gone in the same trend as, as global markets versus the local equities. But looking at the, the, the outlook in the medium term, though, especially for the bonds uh, and the fixed income markets, though, well, is there any respite? Uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> I'll be very honest. It's a tough one. Um, I think that prices are cheap. I think, um, I think that um, if you compare, if I do a region to region or country to country, if you compare Africa to so Ghana, um, you see that uh, Ghana has idiosyncratic issues, so the, 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 the falling prices make sense. Whereas Ivory Coast has been is more of a volatile play; it's not as liquid. Um, but I think that what you see is um, you're going to see a, a rotation out of slightly more um, countries that, that that market participants and investors feel like might have some underlying issues rolling into the likes of Ivory Coast, the likes of, of Senegal, which have proved to be quite stable through everything through COVID. Um, Senegal had some issues, uh, small protests, or violent protests, should I say, March last year. 
or regardless, the market traded well, the paper traded well. Um, so the region seems to be quite strong and also the peg to the euro that the local currency has really helps um, really helps with, with, with giving the impression of stability. So you, you find that, in my opinion, you know, buying, picking up a, an Ivorian five-year bond, a six-year bond at this sort of price makes sense over, you know, other markets that might be more um, susceptible, susceptible to, to, to what's going on in the market globally. Yeah, but in terms of the recovery, the post-COVID-19 recovery of the economy, though, you know, how, how, how do you see the economy holding up? Um, I mean, even COVID-wise, it wasn't as bad as everyone thought. Um, I remember when uh, 2020, 2021, or 2021, rather, when the vaccines came out, a lot of people were trying to dump Senegal paper because they felt like, well, Senegal didn't want to get involved as much with the uh, the vaccination process and things were going to go bad. People were going to, when they got to what's going to happen, what's going to happen. But the, 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 the economy withstood that, I'd say, boldly. Um, also withstood um, the protests. Everyone thought that the protests going on in March last year was going to lead to a coup. But rather, it was just a preparation for the, the local elections that happened uh, about a month ago. So um, the, the, the economy has sort of withstood. Um, Ivory Coast is the same. It's been quite stable through some, some, some stressful periods. Um, and, and the paper, the, the fixing for markets actually show that. Um, so in my view, I think in the medium term, Ivory Coast is a buy.